All right, hey guys, what's going on? So today <clears throat> we are be we're going to be summarizing everything we've gone over. This was a big chapter, and uh, the, this chapter was pretty much the bulk of the book that we're covering, which is no nonsense quantum field theory. And in this chapter that we went through, we had talked about all of the quantum fields. We talked about the Lagrangians, their solutions, and their commutation relationships between the creation and annihilation operators, which was the gist of what we wanted to get out of this chapter. So I want, what I want to do here is just go over all of that briefly, quickly, to make sure that we've covered everything before we move on to the next section of the book, which is going to be um, applications of quantum field theory and where this is where that this is where really um things are going to get interesting right? we're going to talk about Feynman diagrams we're going to talk about um the scattering we're going to talk about uh all that interesting stuff but before we get into the material make sure to hit that like and subscribe button now let's get into it so when we're talking about um quantum fields again uh, what I'm doing here is we're going over a review. So this is a summary of all the quantum fields we've gone over so far. This isn't a, this isn't a, a list of the totality of all the possible quantum fields. This is just what we've talked about. Uh, so we went over a scalar field, right? So the scalar field, the Grandian looked like this. And these, the, the solution was this guy, the solution to the fields of motion that came from this Lagrangian was this guy. And then the, uh, the country of momentum we found was this guy. And these are the forms that they took, right? So we're not integrate. We're not, we're integrating over all possible momenta of, of these, um, of these particles. These things are operators. Keep in mind. Remember when we act, when we use this to act on some ket vector, we are going to get a particle at that location, say, okay. As opposed to the momentum operators, these are the creation and annihilation operators, where we're creating and annihilating particles of a particular momentum. These have a special commutation relationship that uniquely identifies the uh, this scalar field, and that's this right here, right? And all all other combinations of these are zero essentially. So there's the scalar field. Okay, that was two minutes. Not even two minutes. Complex scalar fields, a very similar thing. We went over this, the form of this, we went over the form of this Lagrangian right here. And these are all of the particle operators per se. These are going to be the operators that act on some uh, cat or bra uh, vector describing a particle of a particular momentum placing that particle at some location say right and so and we want to keep in mind also that when we're placing that particle at, part, at a particular location well that's going to be a sum of all the possible momenta right so we have this uh we've gone over that video before we have but we want to keep keep in mind here that because we have these exponentials we're summing over all possible momentum states to get a particle at a particular location. So this is sort of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle in action, right? When we act on a, on a ket state or a bra state with these guys. Anyway, this is what they look like, right? So we've introduced this new B dagger, right? This By introducing this new B dagger, we, uh, we have a complex conjugate of the solution, right? And therefore, we have a conjugate momentum and a complex conjugate to the momentum as well. And this is how we achieve those. We just took derivatives, time derivatives of these guys. And then our momentum operators, again, this is what the commutation, looked like, commutation relationship looked like for those, right? So as opposed to up here, right, we have this new, looks like I accidentally... erase some of those anyways this is what those look like right we have this new addition 
of these two operators here, and this introduced the idea of antiparticles. Right? Um, okay. Now, the next field we went over was the spinner field Lagrangian, right? So the spinner field Lagrangian looked like this, okay? And we found out that the solution to the equations of motion that this Lagrangian gave birth to was, were these guys, right? And the conjugate momentum equation looked something like this, right? So we have, um, this is essentially, that's what that looked like, right? So when we take, when we're taking a look at these equations, right? So now we have, okay, we've had the creation annihilation operators, right? We have these creation and annihilation operators, but we also have these guys here, right? Um, we have this UR, this UR. Well, these are the spinners, right? Because everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, when we're looking at, uh, when we're comparing these equations to the equations with the, um, the equations involving uh, the scalar fields. These guys are the additional piece that make them spinner fields, right? These are uh, the spinners themselves, right? And when we are looking at the this form right here, we're seeing that we're okay. We're summing over all possible momentum that's inside the integral, but we're also summing over all possible spin states. Right, that's where that's what this R refers to, the spin state. Okay. And the momentum operators, these are a little bit different, right? So it sort of takes a similar form to our complex scalar fields, but as you can see, these are anti-commutation relationships. These anti-commutation relationships, as we've seen, give rise give rise to things like the Pauli exclusion principle. Right? And we saw a derivation of that also. Okay, I'm going. I'm blazing through this fast because I want to get through. Uh, I want to get to the next chapter pretty quick here because it's a very interesting chapter, and I I'm really excited to work on that with you guys. Uh, but now the Proca Lagrangian, right? So the Proca Lagrangian. Uh, this is what the Lagrangian looked like, right here, and uh, we have these t the the, the um, these tensors, electromagnetic field tensors. We have this, and our solution looked like this. Remember, our solution was transverse to the the direction of motion, right? And that's when that's when we were talking the completeness relationship. But here, it looks like I missed an integral there. But here, what we're doing is we're summing over all possible momenta again, and this should be a k. If I'm going to be consistent, because we have k's here, this is where that's what we're summing over. We're summing over all possible momenta. These guys here are what's different, right? So we have um, these are not these guys, right? So these guys are the creation annihilation operators. These guys here, these are structure constants. So these are spinners, right? and we've gone over what they look like, and we um, com and you can compare uh, exactly what these structure constants look like uh, with. Uh, compare them with the uh, the spinner field or the spinners, right? So we're we're summing over all possible momenta, but we're also summing over all possible polarizations, right? There's two polarizations again because one polarization is going to be in the direction of uh, the motion of the particle, right? So this is an operator particle. Operator, and then these guys here are the momentum operators. These momentum operators are going to look like this, right? So they're they're kind of similar to what we went over before. However, um, we are looking at however this is what they look like, right? So we have these guys equal to zero, and these guys. Uh, this guy right here not equal to zero, it's equal to this relationship. So that is what I want to go over here. This is just a brief uh, review of all of the quantum fields that we've discussed thus far. And we want to keep in mind also that these are, a lot of these fields 
uh, came from proposed Lagrangians, right? So we can propose, you can propose your own Lagrangian, right? Uh, the constraints then have, have to become, well, do they jive with the laws of nature? Do they jive with, um, do they give birth the equations of motion that we are familiar with in the laboratory setting, right? So when, you, when we propose a quantum field theory, uh, we are proposing either Lagrangian or Hamiltonian, right? One comes from the other. So you can propose uh, Hamiltonian, right? And uh, from the Hamiltonian flows everything else, right? And so the idea here, again, is that these Lagrangians are somewhat arbitrary. And um, the hope here is that you understand that uh, because of the arbitrary nature of these Lagrangians, you are able to perhaps come up with your own field theories, right? And what we're going to do, not in this playlist probably, but in another playlist, is we're going to go over what other field theories might look like, right? The Lagrangians obviously look different for interacting fields. Uh, Lagrangians will look different uh, perhaps if you propose a topological quantum field theory, or if you propose a conformal quantum field theory, or, or what have you. And, uh, yeah, so, so the, the, the world is your, is your oyster, essentially. The, the, you, when you propose a Lagrangian, you propose a quantum field theory um, that you can then test, you can then uh, perform calculations on, and to, to really see... Um, if your if your field theory drives with uh, either making a generalization of the laws of nature or um, or uh, obeys some some patterns that you see in nature as well. So, uh, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this content. Make sure to hit that like and like and subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video where we'll be talking about the next section of the book, which is um, more interactions and the punchline, which is scattering. So I'll see you guys then.